Hello and welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara Brian. Joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Ava Vidal and Ed Byrne, Chris Addison, Hugh Dennis and Milton Jones. We start tonight with a round called Headliners. Here's a picture of Labour's two Eds recently, but what does L-L-I-S stand for? Is it Labour leader is shit? <laughs> No, it, it really, no newspaper has run with that <laughs> as their headline. The Daily Honest. <laughs> Are they not, is it not, it's not initials at all? Are they just being photographed in the Welsh town of Hlis? <laughs> <laughs> is Ed Ball saying, look, look, I'm silly. <laughs> <laughs> it, Ed Miliband's voice finally has been explained. Lump lodged in sinus. <laughs> <laughs> Miliband is looking at balls and he's thinking, Let's live in sin. <laughs> so, uh, they talk about what Ed Balls did and he just let loose uh, invisible sphere. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is, he, is he, in fact, he looking at, you know, a bit surprised? And is that because lubricated love egg is slipping? <laughs> <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Labour like it sexy. Um, is it what Dara's thinking? Lord, let it stop. Yes. <laughs> can, we, can we move towards the question? Yes. Yes. It is. It's <laughs> Lindsay Lowe and his shit face. <laughs> <laughs> no, is, no, really. Not. Is Ed Ball saying to a woman journalist, Look, love, I'm speaking? <laughs> is it what a lot of people in the Labour Party are thinking? Lose leader, invite sibling. Proper bit of politics there. <laughs> Proper. Yeah. Anyway, alternatively, is it <laughs> lubricated love? <laughs> the L stands for the first L stands for Labour. Unsurprisingly, okay. does the second one stand for Liberace? No. <laughs> so, Labour lead is slipping. Yes, it is. Very, very good. Thank you very much, Danny Parson. <laughs> Yes, the answer I was looking for was Labour's lead is slipping. This is the news that a new opinion poll has shown a slump in Labour's lead to just five points over the Conservatives. The Sunday Times YouGov poll shows Labour on 38% and the Tories on 33%. The smallest Labour lead since November last year. Billy Brown's approval rating is now so low, it's almost as low as it is within his own family. That's, that is how bad it is. So much of Labour's problem is down to Miliband's own sort of image. And I, but I, and I feel so sorry for the man. I think he's rubbish, but I feel so sorry for him because I've never heard anybody have to justify their own position as a human more time. <laughs> Whenever he's interviewed, I'm a normal guy. <laughs> you shouldn't have to say that. I'm a normal, I'm a normal guy. <laughs> From my head right down to my ornately feathered vagina, <laughs> I'm a normal, normal guy. I think Labour are doing badly because there are fewer young people. And young people, uh, what's the saying? Uh, when you're young, you're a socialist. When you're middle-aged, you're a conservative. And when you're dead, you're green. <laughs> <laughs> I actually said I, I was going to do a gig for Labour and I got booed. You know, Jesus, I'm a black woman living in this country. Like, there's any other viable option. <laughs> I was like, what am I supposed to do? Go and do a gig for UKIP and, as an encore, deport myself. No <laughs> 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 choice. I... I honestly would like to see that gig. Uh, <laughs> that's what I call ending with showbiz flair. <laughs> the Labour popularity has been halved, as have the Lib Dem popularity. They're down to 11%. But I still think people are missing a track. If any, any pollster asks people, I mean, everybody should say they're going to vote Lib Dem at the next general election, and then nobody should vote for them. And then when Nick Clegg goes, oh, but you promised us, we can all go, yeah, no, you know what I want to do. How did Eric Pickles upstage George Osborne in the last week? He ate him. him. <laughs> yeah. He ate a burger, didn't he? He didn't eat a burger. He didn't eat a burger. No, Osborne, Osborne ate a burger. Osborne, Osborne, Osborne ate a burger. I have a picture here that uh, George Osborne tweeted during the week of him preparing a speech. And everyone picked up, a lot of people picked up what he had in front of him here, which is a burger and chips. 
Do you see this? No, nobody really yeah. picked up on the fact that he, he was Im imitating having a knife and fork in his hand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what to do. And this led to one of the stupidest news stories where they oh. said, what burger was it, though? What burger was it? And it turned out he was from a restaurant called Byron's, whose burgers are, whatever, six quid or something. Well, and tenor. But he tenor. posted this one of him in the burger, and it became this huge story. Yeah. Sham burger, they called it, on the front page of The Sun, because yeah. it wasn't presumably a, like a 99p burger. Uh, and then Eric Pickles, who we every week slag off, right, or, or he gets used as a kind of the go-to joke for being overweight, then <laughs> tweeted this picture of himself at a table with a salad and carrot sticks in front of him. Guess what? If you pull back, yeah, you'll see that that salad is, in fact, the garnish to a four-foot burger. <laughs> <laughs> that he's not touched the salad, he's just eaten the person opposite him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if Eric Pickles has a burger with pickles in it, do you think he goes, well, this is cannibalism? <laughs> What if he eats a pickle with a pickle in, in, while standing in the gherkin? No. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> By the way, which other Tory MP hasn't made the best use of Twitter this week? Andrew Sellis. Andrew Sellis, yeah. It's what did Andrew says tweet this week? He said that immigrants should lean English. He did? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he is an ucking umt. Yes. <laughs> That's why they're a Hey, you know the news, why have a group of pensioners in a field been making headlines? Rolling Stones. Yes, Blessed of course it's the Rolling Stones, yes. Yeah. Fantastic, wasn't it? Oh, I was there. Were you there? Yeah, it was great, it? yeah. Which no, one were you? On, gu on guitars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on, on guitars, we had the Pirate King, we had a walking advert for Just For Men, on, on drums we had a resurrected corpse, <laughs> and then on vocals we had a cross between Michael Caine and a demented pigeon. It was... Yeah. <laughs> It was spectacular. <laughs> I always think what the Rolling Stones is they're so stick thin, like they like they still look like drain pipe trousers, skinny. If one That's of them, painful. if one of them had just gotten fat, <laughs> it'd be hilarious. If they're all like that, rock stars, and one of them's going with a big foot. What? Uh, are we supposed to keep this up? Ah, oh, come on, man. You're sitting in the corner with a, with a pie going, ah, oh, 50 years of trying to fit into these jeans. Like, whatever. I love Just, the fact that Keith Richards still wears... He has to wear that bandana now, cos it's the only thing that's holding his face still together. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's a genuine sound like of fear from you all there. <laughs> he looks like something from the Dark Crystal. <laughs> Keith, oh. Keith Richards was made by the Jim Henson Creature Factory. Uh, his ears turn around. He's like the BFG with slightly, <laughs> slightly larger ears. <laughs> yeah, you should see the size of his snoz cumber. <laughs> I, watched, I watched it from uh, home, but to get the authentic Glastonbury experience, I watched the TV in the living room from the bottom of the garden. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all this stuff is about the Rolling Stones being really old, but they're not as old as Bruce Forsyth, are they? Yeah. The, the first time he went to Glastonbury, he met King Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> he was able to uh, try out his new catchphrase, help the nurses are stealing my clothes. <laughs> 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 the nurses are stealing my clothes, help. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody else think that Mick Jagger's neck looks a bit like a big veiny cock? They do look like there's been a fire at Madame Two Swords. Yeah. <laughs> at the end of that round, the points go to Ed, Ava and Andy. <laughs> now we play a round called A Rolling Stone Gathers No Mocks. This game <laughs> involves Milton, Ava and Chris, so if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is a stand-up challenge. I launch the wheel of news, and wherever it chooses to stop, one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. The winner is whoever I think is the funniest. OK, here we go. Let's spin the wheel. The first subject is parenting. Who wants to come in on that? Ava Vidal. Uh, uh, I'm a parent, and uh, no-one ever actually prepares you properly for being a parent. They give you some books about what's going to happen to your body, how the baby's going to grow. When I find out nowadays if any of my friends are actually going to have a child, the only book I give them is We Need to Talk About Kevin. Because <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you, it hasn't really worked out for me. I uh, can kind of tell how old people's kids are by the enthusiasm in their answer if you ask if they've got kids. Because if they go, yeah, I've got kids, you can tell the kids are still quite young. They haven't had time for the hate to really kick in. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I, having a daughter and having a son, 
I've actually worked out why you men are so messed up. <laughs> um, and what it is, right, is because my son, it, he talks quite a lot. He, he rabbits on a lot. And the other day he was going, Mam, Mam, and I just went, shut up or else I'll knock you out. <laughs> and he turned around to me and he went, Mum, I'd like to see you try. <laughs> so I tried. Um, <laughs> I had to see if the joke would work. And I realised, because my son, it, he's the same height as me now, he plays county-level rugby, he's actually stronger than me. And I realised, gosh, I actually can't physically hurt this boy. So I sat there and I thought about it, and it was at that point I realised, oh, my gosh, I'm going to have to mess him up psychologically. <laughs> <laughs> and that is what we do. Thank you very much, Alex. <laughs> OK, the next subject, please. Let's spin the wheel. Next subject is science. Who wants to come in that? Chris Abson. I'll tell you the problem with science, right? The problem with science is it refuses to speak the language of those of us who don't understand science, right? Even when it's the job of science to be talking to us numpties, it can't bring itself to speak as we do. Pick up a packet of paracetamol, right? Look at the instructions on the back of that. It says, for the treatment of neuralgia, fibrositis, <laughs> muscular, whatever. We don't talk like that. If that talked anything like us, that would say, for the treatment of the worst headache I've ever had in my <laughs> life. A pain in my side, I'm sure, actually, is cancer this time. <laughs> my wife's had to help me out of the car. It's coming out of both ends like someone's hit a pan of chocolate with a mallet. <laughs> <laughs> That is how we talk, right? But it doesn't, it doesn't... We can't tell what's actually science and, and what is some hokey nonsense dressed up as science to, you know, entice us in. That's why, that's why cosmetics companies, whenever they bring out a new thickness of goop, right, they give it a kind of sciency name so we'll be all dazzled. Nivea DNH. <laughs> O-F off. Right? <laughs> Avon's cream, Avon's new cream is called a Nugenics. What? A, a new Gen X, right? That's been through marketing, that's been through focus groups, design. Did nobody at any point go, um, a new Gen X? You don't think that sounds a bit Third Reichy, maybe? <laughs> what next? New pro genocide, now with anti Semitox. <laughs> Sandra, can I borrow your ethnic cleanser? Well done, Chris Anson. And that leaves us with Milton. Let's see what you've been left with. Let's spin the wheel. And the topic is the USA. So I've just come back from America, apparently. <laughs> While I was there, I saw one of those very, 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 very large Americans. He said he fitted kitchens. I said, I bet you don't. I went up to this girl, I said, what's your name? She said, Chantel. I said, well, if you're not going to tell me your name... <laughs> I said, what do you do for a living? She said, don't go there, don't go there, don't go there. I said, I hope you're not a travel agent. <laughs> when I was in America, I bought tickets for the, the Bears versus the Cowboys. Bit of a disappointment. <laughs> I want to see Bears versus Cowboys. <laughs> then I bought tickets for the Giants versus the Jets. <laughs> Another missed opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> then I bought tickets for the Packers versus the Dolphins. <laughs> get in the box, get in the box. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Paul Jeremy on there. That's all set back. Come on. <laughs> The next round is called, if this is the answer, what is the question? On the board are six categories. Ava, which category would you like? Home news, please. OK, home news it is. The answer is 43 years. What is the question? How long does it take to repay a £10 loan from Wonga.com? <laughs> is it, uh, what's the life expectancy of someone who works at Greg's? <laughs> <laughs> is it, what is the... Average Silverstone lap time for a four-wheel <laughs> yeah. yeah. on Pirelli tyres. 
Is it how long is too long to be out for if you say I'm just popping down to the shops for a minute? <laughs> is it how old is the earth if Michelle Obama really is the first lady? <laughs> 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 Is it how old did Darrow look when he was 25? <laughs> no, no, you laughed first. Oh, it's that's cool. sweet. You, you can't yeah, pretend sympathy when you laughed you. first. <laughs> it, it is, in fact, uh, how long have my parents regretted using pulling out as a contraceptive? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> how long will Julian Assange be living in an embassy before he finally goes, do you know what, I should have just gone to jail. <laughs> Is it, if Ed Miliband remains leader, how long will it take before Labour get back into power? <laughs> what is the MILF age of consent? <laughs> OK, if you put in a ready meal 43 years ago, <laughs> how long has it been ready for? <laughs> Is that the correct answer? Well, is that not the correct answer? No, it's not the correct answer. It's... More of any of you have even attempted to do the correct okay. answer. It's in how many years will Brazil be ready to host the 2014 World <laughs> <laughs> Cup? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, genu genuinely... The genuine proper answer right. is how long can Gerard Depardieu balance a spoon on his nose? <laughs> Could they uh, have anything that even vaguely resembles a topic of news story? <laughs> OK. Is it... How many years worth of shale gas are they claiming there is now under the British Isles? Absolutely right, Chris Addison. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. Well done. Yes, the question <laughs> I was looking for is for how long could newly discovered shale gas reserves power the UK? This is the news of the latest government estimates suggest there is enough shale gas under the northwest of England to supply the UK for over four decades. The huge reserve, which is considered to be much higher than previously thought, has the potential to replace the country's ageing coal, oil and nuclear power stations. And for what cost? The north of England. So therefore... <laughs> I've moved down, it's all fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not risk-free, though, is it? No. Blackpool could fall into the sea, and there's risks as well, aren't there? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Blackpool has been mentioned, actually, quite, quite as one of the places, both where there is a significant reserve underneath. Yeah. And they know it's Blackpool, because if you dig down through the rock, it says Blackpool all the way down. Oh. Thank you. Oh, thank, oh, you, very oh, yeah. uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Well, have you seen the footage of people in the States? Like, oh, to, the, have I seen it? Would you like me to show the footage of the stage? Oh, my Lord. In the US, there have been claims that fracking has led to methane contaminating some water supplies. The research suggests this may have been the case before the fracking occurred. This, for example, happened to one woman's tap in Pennsylvania. Just like that. <laughs> now, let me just say, we're not promising that that will happen. <laughs> <laughs> Because that is kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, Why was she... Who's trying to light their water? <laughs> I think she was <laughs> merely doing that for it. demonstration, <laughs> rather than yeah. she'd been doing this for years. Yeah. And suddenly, yeah, suddenly <laughs> it was working. This is, I knew it! I knew this would work someday. I think it's quite useful, because the amount of people that smoke weed and can't find their lighter, it just goes to the tap. <laughs> It is also, by the way, in the, it's in the south of England as well. Yeah, it's yeah, in actually this entire, there's, there's, there's a huge band of this, of this shale rock that lies underneath Yorkshire and Lancashire, yeah. but also in London. Boris Johnson said he would welcome it being done under London to fuel London. Well, yeah, if he's going to explain... Because there isn't any gas under London, so he can say it. Well, yeah. if they start <laughs> drilling in London, they're going, well, there wasn't any gas, but we found these trains... <laughs> <laughs> With these screaming people inside, maybe they could power something. What yeah. giants are we, are we are employing? We to to <laughs> I found these trains. Ha 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 ha! It's brilliant now that we've found energy in England, just as Scotland are thinking of voting for independence. Yeah. 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 We go, oh, thanks for for all of yeah. your energy that we've shared. <laughs> now, you know, on your way. And of course, if they do do fracking all the way across the Pennines, Scotland may well have to go for independence <laughs> as it drifts off into the north. <laughs> <laughs> what, what you have to remember is that what happens down a collapsed mine shaft stays <laughs> down. <laughs> yeah. In other news, who has been spied on this week? Europe. Europe. Spied yes. on Europe. 
Yeah. They put a bug. It all sounded very high tech until they mentioned they'd put a bug in the fax machine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like, are they still using fax machines? <laughs> the only message that you're going to get on a fax machine these days is the message, hello, is anybody else out there who still has a fax machine? <laughs> hello, <laughs> I'm trapped in a fax machine <laughs> factory. <laughs> Could you please send help? <laughs> the only yeah. contact I can make is by... <laughs> the back it is, it's apparently spying on the, on the EU. And like, you kind of go, uh, you can understand the EU, it's causing some tension now, because the EU would be going, OK, you're spying on, on Russia, we get that there's like a thing, but like, Dude, like, come on, like, it we're like, on your, we're on your side, for Christ's sake. Bad manners spying on friends, isn't it? It's like when you invite somebody to come round and spend the night in the spare bedroom and you put a webcam in there. <laughs> <laughs> it's not right, is it? I mean, obviously, we've all done it. We've, we've all done it. It's not right. I've not enjoyed watching those tapes. They're actually bugging the Italian embassy. You think, what is the point of that? Nothing is going to embarrass the Italians. <laughs> Prime Minister yeah. had bunga bunga parties in his own home, and he was the one who was telling everybody about them. <laughs> he, he might have probably just found the camera and did it to his own. A camera! Bunga bunga! <laughs> <laughs> it must also be, the, you, you know, spying on the European Union must be the most disappointing assignment <laughs> for <laughs> any spy or secret agent, isn't it? Yeah. 007, your mission is to find the agricultural production figures for the fiscal <laughs> year. For 2015. Just remember, nothing mm -hmm. depends on it. <laughs> <laughs> Just let you know about what's been happening this week to our favourite uh, whistleblower, Don't Edward happen. Snowden. Well, yeah, nothing we... has happened to him. Yes. He's still in Moscow airport. He's pissed, he's in duty free with a bottle of Stolich Nia going, why did I do it? <laughs> The, um, yes, no, the, and where's where it turned him down? Because he's applied... Everywhere. Everywhere's it's turned terrible. him down. In, 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 you know, in gratitude for him revealing to us who, that the Americans have been spying on us, we've just gone, right, well, anyway, you're not our problem. <laughs> <laughs> he sent asylum requests out to 21 different countries. It's looking a bit desperate. It's beginning to look a bit like an episode of Take Me Out. <laughs> really. <laughs> Let's nope. let the traitor fret and wait! <laughs> <laughs> The one thing I would say is that there's one person in the world with whom you think would have some sympathy for him, and he has no sympathy for him, which is obviously Julian Assange. Because if he rings Julian Assange, he goes, oh, my God, I am, I'm, it's wrecking my head, I'm trapped in this airport. And Assange is in his one room in the Ecuadorian embassy going, airport! I dream of an airport! <laughs> At the end of that round, the point's going to Chris Hugh and Milton! <laughs> Now we come to scenes we'd like to see, so if everyone can make their way over to the performance area. I'll read out this week's topics and then we'll see what our panellists can come up with. OK, here we go. The first subject is... Lines you wouldn't hear in a sci-fi movie. <laughs> Captain's Lodge, start date 21.35... It's a Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, Jeremy Carl's just got the DNA results back. And apparently, Luke, I'm not your father. <laughs> Commander Skywalker, bad news. We left R2-D2 outside to stand guard and the council took him away for emptying. <laughs> I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. I've seen attack ships on fire off the shoulder of Orion. <laughs> I've seen... <laughs> 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 There's a giant satsuma in front of the ship. <laughs> Go to orange alert. <laughs> First, there were snakes on the plane. Now the British remake. Wasp in a car. <laughs> you can't win, Darth. If you strike me down now, I shall become more powerful than... And get off, you prick! <laughs> <laughs> What is it, Captain? I've never seen anything like it in my life. Of course not, Scotty. It's the sun. <laughs> <laughs> Since you have got your laser gun trained on me, I've got a bit of stubborn hair just here. <laughs> Permission to beam down to the Forbidden Planet. 
No. <laughs> I can see dead people. That's because I'm watching UK TV Gold. <laughs> Here are the sci-fi football results. R2D2. <laughs> C3P. Nil. <laughs> Look at all those fading, dwindling stars forced to eat bugs in a jungle. If you leave our protection, you will almost definitely die. Scotty, do you still want independence? <laughs> <laughs> Luke, I am your father. Go to your room. <laughs> Captain, I don't like it when you call me Spock Face. To boldly go where no man has gone before. Anne Widdicombe. <laughs> How many Klingons does it take to change a dilithium crystal? <laughs> Ten. One to change it, and the other nine to chastise him for performing such a menial task when he's a member of a proud warrior race. <laughs> <laughs> OK, the next topic is... Unlikely personal ads. I could be the man of your dreams. If you dream of a man who exposes himself to people on trains. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a cat person. I sleep all day and I bury my poo in the garden. <laughs> For sex with no strings attached, don't shag a puppet. Katie Price seeks new husband. Position temporary. Usual terms and conditions apply. <laughs> Looking for love in all the wrong places? Well, you wanted to be a priest. <laughs> Ugly fat bloke. <laughs> Looking for a supermodel with a sense of humour. <laughs> Man prone to violent mood swings seeks lovely woman to go screw yourself. I love you! <laughs> <laughs> Female, 22, 33, 52. One of them's my age. <laughs> Are you feeling lucky, punk? <laughs> Agrophobic seeks claustrophobic for doorstep encounters. <laughs> oh. I am Ponus of the planet Testiclon 8. I seek a human female to take my seed. Make a better world for both our planets. <laughs> Dave Croydon. <laughs> Pessimistic man seeks depressed old lady so as we can have some really shit times. <laughs> Gorgeous, 5 foot 11 black woman. Amazing body, great rack. I sort of put it out there. <laughs> I'm a George Clooney look-alike who's looking for a woman with visual impairment. <laughs> Do you like swinging? Meet me down by the swings. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for a dominant woman. Tell me to call you. Do you like dogs? Good, cos I'm small, hairy and hung like a border terrier. <laughs> Sophisticated, erudite man with fin de siècle tastes. <laughs> Six woman with massive norks. <laughs> man with massive cock. Six woman with large hen to discuss poultry farms. <laughs> At the end of that round, for the end, Avan Andy. Oh. And 
That's the end of the show. This week's winners are Andy Parsons, Adam Nadal and Ed Byrne. <laughs> Commiserations to Chris Addison, Hugh Dennis and Milton Jones. Thank you for watching. I'm Gary Breen. Good night. And Mock the Week's back next Thursday at 10. Tomorrow night at the same time, history's the hot topic here on BBC Two for QI.